Merry Christmas, everyone. I hope you're all having a fantastic holiday season. I know I am because today I get to bring you the origins of Christmas words. Let's kick this off like a lot of great holiday parties do. Eggnog. Yeah, I know some of you think eggnog is disgusting, and I like to call those people tasteless wine bags, but never mind that. Why is it called eggnog? Well, the history of eggnog is actually a little complex. It's had many names over the years, like egg flip, egg milk punch. The French call it chicken milk. For those who don't know what eggnog is exactly, it's milk, egg, sugar, nutmeg or cinnamon, and for the grown-ups, brandy and whiskey. Brandy or whiskey, rather. You could do brandy and whiskey. Obviously, it can be non-alcoholic like they sell it in the carton. Being as it has eggs, that describes why it's called eggnog, but the origin of nog is actually disputed. It's either short for noggin, which is a word for a little wooden cup, or it's grog, a short name, like a short name of grog, which is another word for beer. Moving on, let's dig into the word mistletoe. The toe part comes from an Old English word tan, which means twig. The missile part comes from the Old English word missile, which was the name of the plant itself. This word is also of uncertain origin, but the most unfortunate proposed origin is a Germanic word for urine. Mitsu, which sounds too Japanese for my liking, which is from the Proto-Indo-European maich, which would just as unfortunately relate to the word mist. Kiss under the piss twig, kids. Now to close this out, let's address the man of the hour, Christmas. Christmas comes from the Old English Christus Massa, which is Christ's Mass. Mass in this case like a Catholic Mass. It doesn't have the same origin as Mass as in the Mass of an object. And that came from the Old French mess, which is from the Latin mito, which means and is related to dismissal. This is because at the end of a Catholic service in Latin, you say ita misa est, which means go, you are dismissed. This phrase became eventually what they called the service itself. Christ has a much more interesting origin, and it will actually lead us to a Proto-Indo-European word web. Here we can see that Christ came from the Greek Christos, meaning anointed one. This came from another Greek word, Christio, which means to smear, which came from the Proto-Indo-European pre, which also meant to smear. This root also led to the Proto-Germanic Grimo, which meant mask, and it led to our word grime, with the idea of something being like smeared on your face. Think of it as you can smear oil on someone to anoint them with oil, or something that you smear can be dirty or sticky. Around Christmas time, we may dig up an old debate. Is writing Xmas taking the Christ out of Christmas? Well, I'm here to settle that for you once and for all, and by I, I mean not me. I'm going to bring in somebody with a real degree from a college my beloved fiance, Grace Baker. Hi, I'm a historian, art historian, and general medieval manuscript enthusiast. What Matthew was referring to is one of the most famous pieces of manuscript art, a staple in any Art History 101 class. Known as the Cairo page, it comes from the Book of Kells, an illuminated gospel book from the 9th century. The Cairo page is just as it sounds, a giant, ornate Greek chi and rho joined together and intricately decorated. You see, chi and rho are the first two letters of the Greek Christos, which I'm sure editing Matt will put on the screen now. However, what he probably doesn't know, and probably doesn't know I'm going to talk for so long about, is the long history of Christograms that exist in Christian art. The Cairo was not invented for manuscripts, although they may have allowed for a more widespread use of the abbreviation. Medieval manuscripts in general, and most medieval art, was based heavily on Byzantine art. The Byzantines are famous for their mosaics, where we can find all kinds of abbreviations, not just for Christ, but for God, Lord, Spirit, as in the Holy Spirit, Savior, Human, and the Virgin Mary, which is commonly referred to as either Mother, or my personal favorite, Theotokos, meaning God-bearer. 
The Byzantine Empire is where Christianity gets a lot of their traditions, but even the Byzantines did not invent this idea. We have found nomina sacra, or abbreviated Christian names, in codexes and scrolls from as early as the 2nd century, but scholars argue that this practice was already well established at this time. So there you have it. Putting the X in Xmas came before Xmas itself. The first recorded Christmas wasn't until 336. Spicy. We here at WordNerd would like to wish you a happy holidays, a merry Christmas, and a happy new year. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, a, a noggin is a little wooden cup. Right? Okay. Ornate Latin chi and rho joined together and intricately delicate. Yes. Can you say Greek? But.